Hello, my name is Eleanor Levine, and I am the author of Kissing a Tree Surgeon, a collection of short stories, which I'm honored will be coming out from Guernica Editions this fall. And this is a copy of the cover of Kissing a Tree Surgeon. It's about as close as I've gotten because the coronavirus has actually uh, slowed down the mail process quite a deal from Canada to the U.S. and other places. In any case, I'm a poet, writer, short story person, and um, I also am a medical editor in New Jersey and New York. And I am going to read you Kissing a Tree Surgeon, the story featured on the cover today, and I hope you enjoy it and will consider getting the book, as well as all the other Guernica books, Kissing a Tree Surgeon. I once kissed a tree surgeon from Lake Placid during a one-night tryst, so it was not considered such a big deal, though my friend Julie, who was ostensibly straight, kept coming into the bedroom while we were making out. She'd look in and close the door and stare over the covers where we snuggled and kissed. Apparently, I was permitted to have sex, but it wasn't clear if permissible meant acceptable to Julie. I have always loved Julie. Even today, though she is married and no longer speaks with me because I made anti-Julie's boyfriend presents and gave them to her in front of him. One year, I gave her a crystal vase that said, I love Prince Valiant. And as her lover's name was Valiantes, this was considered a foul pas, faux pas. Most of the people at her birthday parties were surprised that Julie would invite me back each year. And I've had, I'd have yet another unsavory message with a crystal vase for him. He was not without his unsavory messages for me. One year after they were married, I called to speak with Julie. And since he knew my voice, he didn't bother to say hello and shouted, Are you the only one on earth not watching the Super Bowl? He hung up. Since that day of the Super Bowl hang-up, she and I have not spoken. The real cessation occurred, however, when Julie didn't invite me to her wedding. I had been to her house, her favorite restaurant, had called her mother and stepfather to discuss my personal issues. I had bonded with her father, who was an alcoholic. He condescendingly called me a teetotaler. Julie and I even shared our deepest secrets while an Ethiopian cab driver who had gotten his PhD in economics hit his brake with each new revelation he heard us discuss. His English was very good. I was curious as to why I hadn't received an invite. Is there a reason you're not inviting me to your wedding? I asked her. Yes, I'm not sure how you'd behave. I'm really hurt. I mean, I thought we were close, had a meaningful relationship. Sadism, she said, particularly from your end, is not what I deem meaningful. Click. The click from a landline has always been distressing. We hadn't spoken since they moved to Maine, where her husband was a communications professor specializing in Fox News. His thesis was that Gerald Ford's contribution to America was negligible compared with Richard M. Nixon's, though Nixon was still, as he is today, maligned in academic circles. That she didn't invite me, I was so mortified, so astonished. I was the fairy godmother in Sleeping Beauty who was not invited to the wedding, unlike the overlooked fairy godmother. However, I wouldn't, based on ethics derived from Martin Heidegger, ever cause a person to nap so long. They wouldn't know when their being had ended or begun because the sleep would induce mass levels of confusion. But alas, it might have been the tree surgeon incident more than my, the crystal vase writings or my other behavioral improprieties, including applying for a job in her office while she was still working there, that infuriated her. Julie is drunk and speechless when she sees me making out with her old boyfriend Andrew's best friend, a tree surgeon who lives in Rye, New York. We are at Andrew's party where beer is on tap and hormones whir like gnats. Julie had broken Andrew's heart because he was not bohemian enough and did not grasp the meaning of her sonnets, though he had the right chromosomal lines to combine with hers. Previously, Julie had assumed I was 100% lesbian, and banned me from her bed, which was why I had startled her by my behavior. Julie didn't like me that way and insisted I remain on the couch when I slept over, as if sleeping in her bed would do anything but obliterate my peace because she snored so loudly. 
She was absolutely convinced I might rape or seduce her or whatever expletives homophobic straight women or on trust funds attending graduate school in New York City uttered in the late 80s. Also, Julie had hosted Eudora Welty in her Manhattan apartment, and it would be sacrilegious in her mind to have an orgasm with me in the same space where Miss Welty had made jokes about Southern bread and dispossessed janitors. What are you doing, Agatha? I am kissing the tree surgeon whose blonde sultriness is overwhelming her. Agatha! Kissing is extremely difficult to stop, particularly when the beer has driven your mind to scintillating levels. Julie, do you mind? Mind what? I am trying to make out with what's-his-name, I say, hoping she will find no subtle reasons to remain in the room. But she remains just as she rages when I speak with other men and women who take time away from her. Julie is also keen not keen on our friend Alessandro, who makes jokes that lead me to insatiable fits of laughter. She stares with impatience when I am oblivious to her. Julie sits on the chair next to us. She too has had a few too many beers. Do you mind, the tree surgeon asks. What, she says, as if in her drunken euphoria there are ceiling tiles falling. We'd like some privacy, he says, my thoughts championing his. The tree surgeon is confused that I have a chaperone. It would be okay if Julie were joining, but no, she is levitating toward us. You guys have already shared this honeymoon, and we have school in the morning. We? Ah, come on, Agatha. It's 12 a.m., and I must be going. Julie, it's 2 a.m., and I'm... Well, if you don't go now, we won't get a ride home. Julie gets my coat and throws it on top of us. The tree surgeon releases me from his caress, and the mood is gone, like a wild oak that has been knocked over by the wind. Well, I hope you've enjoyed my reading of The Tree Surgeon. You can buy it at Guernica Editions, their website, or you can get it on my website, eleanorlevinewriter.com. Thank you, and have a good day. Bye!